I'm honored to be here. And uh, looking at today's uh, or this year's topic, Ideas Beyond the War, I thought I should do something about the war and uh, see where we are at. Everyone is looking at the war frontier. And uh, I thought of looking at the war somewhere else on our screens. I was going to start by asking the question, are we media savvy? And uh, I'm not sure if we are yet, but uh, the next few slides will, I'll hopefully try and explain where we are at with this as a journalist and as somebody who's been covering Iraq. Since 1991 in Kurdistan and 2003 in Iraq, uh, I was asking how much money did we spend on media? And calculating everything, I think we are close to $500 million, if not more, if not, at least we are $500 million. On August 15th this year, what happened? Uh, I was in Europe for a weekend conference. My wife called, said, Hiwa, the street is full of people. They are leaving Erbil. And it was one tweet from ISIS that said, we are coming. And uh, I called it that ISIS has won the media war. More than half a billion dollars could not keep the people in their houses. Uh, let's see how they did it. They realized that we live in Facebook Stan and Twitter Stan. And uh, it's a new order, it's a new world. It has new rules. What are they? First of all, let's, see it, let's look at the population of this Facebook Stan and Twitter Stan country here in Iraq and in Kurdistan. As of this morning, I was looking at, this, uh, at these figures this morning before doing this presentation. 8.2 million Iraqis are on Facebook. 2.6 of them are between the ages of 18 and 23. 3.6 are between the ages of 23 and 35. 6.2 million of them are men. And 1.96 million are women. And in this environment, let's see what the rules are for operating. The question for all of us is, do we really understand this world? Do we really know how to operate? And do we know the rules? Rule number one is that we are all equal. Me, you, the Khalifa and anyone else, we all have a mobile phone, username, and a password. But how to get there first? The new country has no borders. We are all connected. Borders are meaningless. There's a camera everywhere. There are at least five billion lenses on this planet, and this is not a small number. And the question is, uh, and over the past 10 years, I would say, or at least five years, all our main news bulletins started off with a camera like this, with a picture from a camera of a mobile, not a professional camera. Information is the weapon, is the tool in this new country. Your importance comes from the importance of your information. But which information? It has to be accurate, it has to be new and useful. People who use that information, who see the information, they need to make use of it. On the 15th, of August, when people saw the tweet of ISIS saying, we are coming, they used it. They left their houses. In the olden days, this is what life was like. Government operated 
in a space where they were. The green guys in the middle are the media, and they transmitted the information to the public. And we all had lots of time. The main bulletin was at 8 o'clock in the evening, or at 7, or at 9. And as government, we had 24 hours to reply to news, and we had quite some time to prepare. Today, life is different. This is what life is like today. These wheels, before ISIS, they were three. I had the blue one and the two gray. Today, we have a new wheel added to the information game. And this is what we need to be mindful of. And this is the time of now. You move one, all the other three will move. And if we are not, the big question is, who is the one who's going to move the wheel first? Or the engine first? Today, it is the time of now. Things happen interchangeably at the same time, simultaneously. And news is out now, and it, something happens here, the same minute it's in New York and it's in Tokyo. So the key player in today's world is not the journalist. It is, is what uh, a BBC journalist called it the information doer. The person who does, who, who puts information to the public, who creates the information. I think this scene will disappear, or will, be, will start to be meaningless in terms of news and in terms of information. It will, be st it will still be there for events like this, maybe, to get a nicer picture, or for features, or for longer stories. But for journalists, for news journalists, this will disappear. The big question is today, who is the best information doer? Is it the state? Is it the other state, ISIS? Or is it the media or the people? Let's look at each one of them, see how they are. Remember, rule number one, we're all equal. The state, it's traditionally careful, conservative with giving out information and it is slow, and it lacks initiative, you know? States are normally secretive, even the most open states, and you have to approach them with information. They don't have this flow of information culture yet. Media. Media, the traditional media, again, it's very careful with giving out information, and uh, very careful with giving out inaccurate information because reputation is key for any media outlet, any self-respecting media outlet. And to provide professional coverage is very expensive, and they may not have the money. The other state. Uh, the other state, looking at its characteristics, it's aggressive. It gives out any information that makes it scary, that makes it look strong. In short, it's in propaganda mode, just pumps out information to scare people and to get them to do what it wants them to do. The people, this is the source of strength that our normal states didn't use yet. They are everywhere. They all have a mobile and a transmission tool. Soon, ICSL will have 3G. Korak will also have 3G, for example. And every country, all, with every day that passes, we have new technology to, to be able to give out information. They're able to provide inexpensive coverage that may not be totally accurate, but the crowdsourcing of the information to get more than one picture, it creates a good enough picture. 
and they are able to respond quickly to events. So, how can we win with that setup? We need to fight, I hate to use the word fight, but it is a war of information, on two fronts. We need to work on our information and their propaganda. How can I be the information and information doer? The information needs to be that I put into the social media body, into the media body today, it needs to be new, needs to be accurate, and it needs to be useful. I need to be credible. Uh, credibility is key in winning because you can easily establish that the other side doesn't have that credibility. They use it as propaganda. And it, because it's difficult to build, but it's very easy to, to destroy. To be there first and fill the information gap. The information has to come from you first. When ISIS said we are coming to Erbil, the government should have immediately responded and did not leave it to the traditional media. We should have had a space to operate, to, to, to fight them there, in their territory of media. Transparency is the best guarantor to always have an answer. Uh, the key challenge for governments not to be able to provide an answer is transparency. But to have the culture of transparency enables you to give an answer quickly and immediately. Governments need to have an answer and they need to answer it now. And for this, it's, easy, it's easier said than done. But this is where the calls for an e-government are key because with an e-government you have a system whereby you tap into just like a search on your computer and you get any answer to any information. With their propaganda, don't retweet, don't share, don't post and don't comment on it. What they want is exactly this. They want you to give it to everyone else. Just keep it there. Delete it. And I think by doing this, creates, us, creates from us a media savvy public. Thank you.